Hi, my name is Oran Horvat. In this video, I will talk to you about incremental coding, a specific coding technique which helps you implement complex pieces of code without making silly bugs. You may know me from Plural Site, where I have published some 60 hours of video courses. If you want to learn more, if you like what you learn in this video, please visit me at Plural Site and watch my video courses there. This video is part of a mini series where we will first talk about writing code incrementally, then we will talk about proving that a piece of code is correct, I mean formally proving in mathematical terms, and then we will move on to augmenting an implementation so that it proves, demonstrates its correctness as it runs. Now, this may sound like magic to you, and to an extent it is, but the real magic is coming at the very end, when we will rewrite the entire feature using coding style where code is the formal proof of its own correctness. Now, that will be magic. So, bear with me, watch the entire series as it is published, Follow the links from the description, where the links to other videos in this mini-series will appear. Please subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click the bell if you really want to see the notifications, so that you don't miss notifications about new videos and about live coding sessions on my channel. Now we can start. Incremental coding. What does it mean? Incremental coding means to write code in increments, in small pieces where every line of code means something, it adds a feature to the solution. You don't go back and change this line, that line, no, you don't do that. You only add at the end. And by adding a new line of code, you have added a new feature. As an example, I will develop a function which implements quick sort algorithm. It is a non-trivial sorting algorithm, a very efficient one, massively used today. If you call sort on any data structure, chances are that it will be quick sort running behind. And how do I know that this function works? We are not ready to prove code correctness yet. We will deal with that in the next video. So I created a demonstration function, which I will call, give it how many items to try to sort. It will construct a list of double values, apply the quick sort function, and see if, if the values are sorted after that. So if I started this empty function, it will even succeed in one case. That is when there is only one item in the, in the array, in the list. We can move on without changing the code that is already there. For example, I have heard that those spans are very fast today, so I want to, I want to sort the span instead of the list. And I will just delegate the call from the quick sort of list to the quick sort of span. I can now focus on this function and completely ignore everything that I coded so far. All right, you can say that this is trivial, Yes, it is, but it has prepared ground for writing a real complex function. Now, the incremental coding technique will come to, to a real test. Do you know the quick sort algorithm? It is very simple to explain, but a bit harder to implement. You will select one element from that span and call it a pivot. Then you partition the span. After partitioning, the pivot is put somewhere in the middle so that everything to the left of it, of it is smaller or equal to the pivot and everything to the right of it is strictly greater than the pivot. And then you recursively sort everything to the left and everything to the right. And if the sorting function is right, it will fully sort the left partitions, fully sort the right partition, and with the pivot in the middle, the entire partition, the entire span will be sorted. 
I will first deal with the trivial case because this is recursive function. I need a termination condition. So here it is. If the span has up to one element, it is sorted. So give up. We need to select the pivot. If you ever investigated quick sort algorithm, you will know that there are several pivot selection algorithms. One of the strategies is to pick three elements from the, the span and select the middle one. I will pick an element somewhere in the middle, ju just random. I could, I could take the first three elements in the span for the sake of it, but never mind. We have the first element, the middle element, and the last element as candidates. And I want to select the middle of the three. I will need a helper function for this. This is the index of the, the smallest item out of three. I will put that item to the first position by swapping the first position in the span. What we wanted is the second smallest. So now we calculate the smaller of the other two. And then we swap that one to the index zero. I was only writing one line at a time, ignoring all the lines that, that precede or taking the state like this middle or smallest value as a given. Whatever was required to calculate it, it was done before. In the current line, I am looking what needs to be done next. So every single line is changing the state of the system by a little bit, and it is responsible for that little bit. If every single line so far did its job right, we will have a pivot element, the median of three selected elements, positioned at span of zero. And that is the next state, the state of the system from which we start in implementing the second feature, partitioning. Index of the left hand partition begins at index one, and the upper is positioned beyond the end. So they will start closing the gap, and once they close the gap, once they become equal, the partitioning will be over. While there is a gap, and we know that there will be a gap at the very beginning, because the length of the span is greater, strictly greater than one. While there is gap, we must swap elements so that left-hand partition only consists of elements that are lower or equal to the pivot, and the right-hand partition only consists of elements that are strictly greater than the pivot. That is how quicksort works. While current element on the left is less or equal to the pivot, it is all right, just move on. And I just made a bug. Can you see it? The problem is that maybe, maybe we were so unlucky to pick the pivot, which is equal to the greatest element in the array, in the span. And then the lower enclosure will, would swipe the entire span exceed its upper bound and cause index out of range exception. So we must protect from that. Oh, no, this, this, this was really close. This was the closest point to making a bug. Now move the upper, the upper exclusive bound to the left while elements we encounter are strictly greater than the pivot. We don't need the guard because there is the pivot element on the left, and there is no way that the upper exclusive bound will swipe the entire span and move to the left outside of the span because there is the pivot to stop it. After this point, it is possible that either the two bounds have become equal by closing the gap, by separating all the elements, or they did not touch, but they stopped because there is an inversion. There are two elements that are stopping them from continuing further. So what we need to do is to swap those two elements and we will make both partitions correct again. We will move 
the boundaries by one step closer and partitioning will still be all right. Maybe they will close the gap, maybe not, but we can make that one step. Incremental coding all the way down, do you see it? And just writing one line of code in every single step. And I'm ignoring the rest of the code. I'm consciously ignoring it. Because I don't want to think about too many things at the same time. I only want to think about one thing, about one line, because every single line is complex here. There's a lot to think. Even if you focus on a single line, there's a lot to think about. Incremental coding technique is helping you focus on a single problem and at any given moment. After this while loop terminates, partitioning is done, except that there is one more step to do. This is the rightmost index in the left partition. Swap the pivot with that element and the pivot will now be located at the index indicated by the middle variable. What we do next is to recursively sort the left-hand partition excluding the middle, excluding, and then recursively sort everything on the right of the pivot, the middle point, excluding the middle point again. Now, since one element is missing in the recursive calls, both left and right partition will be smaller than the original span, so we are shrinking the problem size and eventually it will reach value 1 or 0 and all recursive calls will terminate and the entire root call will terminate and the entire span will be sorted. How do I know that? I don't know, I'll try it out. I have that testing function. I'm running the application and my testing function says that it is sorting all the test lists correctly, so I believe there is no bug in here. There really is no bug here. Do you know how I know that? Because I have proven, formally proven, that this function is implemented correctly. You will learn how to prove that this function is correct in the next video. Subscribe to notifications on my channel and watch the next video when it appears, when we will formally prove correctness of this entire function. Thank you for watching and see you later.